In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Octosolve to do automated analysis of a pumping test performed in the Clemson bottom. I'm going to use just the pumping data from a monitoring well or observation well. The pumping test was performed in well CBL7 and monitored in well CBL4. So I've already done the Jacobs straight line analysis here. Here's some parameters about my wells. These are my observation data for both the pumping well and the monitoring well. I fit my Jacobs straight line to the later portion of the test here for my pumping data and I get a transmissivity of 1.3 feet squared per minute and a storativity of 0 0.00071. So now I'm going to bring these data into Octosolve to do an automated analysis. So you can download a free trial of Octosolve from their website, which will allow you to do the full analyses, but you won't be able to save your data to a file. So we'll go ahead and open Octosolve here. What Octosolve does is type curve matching to estimate aquifer parameters. So what this means is that it's going to attempt to fit an idealized type curve uh, solution to your data by tweaking the aquifer parameters. And so our Jacob straight line analysis is a fairly simple one, which assumes things like uh, full penetration of the well through the aquifer and an infinite extent. There are solutions available in the software that consider uh, more complicated scenarios like partially penetrating wells, um, well bore storage, leaky aquifers, and so on. And I encourage you to go in and experiment with these later on to see how they affect the results you get. For now, we're just going to consider the Cooper Jacobs straight line analysis. So, to begin a pumping test analysis, we'll go to File and say New, and it allows you to select the new data set you want to import. So, I'll say New Pumping Test Wizard and say OK. It asks me what type of pumping test was performed, whether a single well where drawdown is measured only in the pumping well or a multi-well test, which is what I have where drawdown is measured in observation wells as well as the pumping well. So I'll say OK. I'll select Next to first set up the units. So here I can select my spatial and temporal units. Um, I select my pumping rate units as well and the output units I want for my hydraulic conductivity. So these can either be consistent with my inputs or I can specify a particular output. Similarly for the pumping rate. I'll just keep the defaults of feet and minute as all my measurements are in these units. And I'll say next. In this second step for project information you can set up some parameters of the test that would be output on a figure if you had the full version of the data. You can still preview that figure, you're just not able to save it. So you can fill these out if you like, or you can leave them blank. I'll say next. Here we need to describe our aquifer. We need to specify the saturated thickness of the aquifer. Here in the bottoms, my aquifer saturated thickness is, I'll assume it's about 30 feet and that my wells are only partially penetrating. The Cooper Jacob analysis does assume fully penetrating wells, but we'll st still set it up as a partially penetrating well here in a second. You can specify a hydraulic conductivity anisotropy ratio if you're interested in um, somehow estimating that vertical hydraulic conductivity. Since we're only estimating the horizontal hydraulic conductivity, I'll leave this value as 1 and say next. Here I need to set up the pumping well information so I can specify the name which was CBL7. You can specify the coordinates. Um, these can be either UTM coordinates or measurements from some datum which you have. This is really important to have at least relative coordinates for multi-well tests so that the analyses can incorporate the proper radius between wells. Since I only have two wells, I'm going to just use the x-coordinate to differentiate them 
and I'll have my pumping well located at the origin of 0, 0. So I'll leave these as 0, 0 and say next. Here I can set up some details about the pumping well construction. Again, that Jacob analysis assumes vertical full penetration of my well through the aquifer, but I do know that it was partially penetrating, and other more advanced solutions can account for that partial penetration effect. Here I see some parameters, D, L, and so on, um, that I can look at the diagram here. I'll point out the help menu to you, which is very useful in OctaSolve. If you get stuck at any time, you can press the help and you can get a very nice uh, help menu here which shows you in good detail what each of these parameters mean. So D is the depth to the top of the screen, right? So measure the depth from the water table to the top of your screen. And L is the screen length itself. Good. So the depth to the top of the screen in in my well was 20 feet and the length of my screen was 10 feet. My unit here was the pumped aquifer because I only have a single aquifer system. I'll say next. Here we set up the radius information for the pumping well. I need to specify RC or the well casing radius and RW the radius of the well itself or the well bore. So my casing is uh, the radius of my casing is 0 0.167 feet and the radius of the well bore was 0 0.42 feet. It's a 4 inch diameter well with an 8 inch diameter well bore which is where I got those values. I'll say next. Here we're going to enter our pumping well rate data or the flow rate that we were pumping from the aquifer. So here in this column I need to specify the time um, beginning at zero and then the rate. I was pumping at about 7.5 gallons per minute which corresponds to one cubic foot per minute and all my measurements of drawdown were relative to the start of pumping. So my beginning time was zero and my rate was one cubic foot per minute. I'll say next. Now I'm going to set up my observation well or my monitoring well. Its name was CBL4 and I know it was at a distance of 15.1 feet from my pumping well. So I'll just specify along the x direction a separation of 15.1 feet. Again you can be much more um, accurate about your representations here or if you're analyzing several wells you'll want to be more explicit about their locations relative to one another or relative to some datum. I'll select next. Here I'm going to also specify vertical partial penetration for the uh, observation well construction. It was constructed in the same way as my pumping well with a depth to the casing of 20 feet and a screen length of 10 feet and again pumping from or my unit is the pumped aquifer that it is screened in. I'll say next. CBL4 is a 2 inch diameter well so the radius of my casing was 0.083 feet but it was also drilled with a slightly smaller auger, my wellbore radius is 0 0.33 feet. I'll select next. Here I need to enter my observations. Right, so enter time as elapsed time since pumping began and observation data are optional for pumping wells. Well this is my observation well so here I'm going to enter my time and my displacement data or my drawdown. What I can do is actually copy these directly from Microsoft Excel. OctoSolve is a bit picky about the format in which you copy and paste things, so your elapsed time needs to be in a column directly next to your drawdown or your displacement. 
So I'm going to copy my monitoring well data from Excel. I go to OctaSolve, and then I'm going to click this Paste button, and it brings in all of my observations. So you notice this first row here um, is not filled in with a value. It seems to automatically begin at the second row. That's fine. You can either delete the row if you like, or you can leave it. It doesn't affect the analysis in any way. This third column is a weighting of each point. So the default is for all points and observations to be weighted the same in the solution. If you have one or a few values that you think are very erroneous and you don't want them to affect your solution, you can enter a weight of zero to turn them off completely from the solution or possibly weight them lower, say 0.5 or 0.2 or some other value. But I'll just keep the defaults of one for all my observations and say next. So now it's congratulating me and telling me that the wizard is complete. And it tells me what I need to do next. Which is I need to plot my data, take a look at it and inspect it. I can choose a solution that I'm going to use for the curve matching. And then it tells me I should perform visual matching prior to the automatic curve matching to refine the starting estimates. And I'll demonstrate all of these things now. I'll say finish. A window comes up telling me that there are no errors detected in the data set, which is good. So let's go ahead and plot the data. And we want to do it in such a way that is similar to our Jacob straight line analysis, which is drawdown on a linear scale and time on a log scale. So what I'll do is I'll go to view and say displacement time. And this is going to create a plot of the drawdown versus time. And notice here that my displacement is a linear unit and my time is on a log scale just like I would expect for my Jacob straight line analysis so that's good. So next what I want to do is select my solution. The way I do that is I go to the match dialog or drop down here and I'm going to say match solution. And this window comes up with a list of possible solutions you could use to match your data or to fit your data to. I'll uncheck this box here that comes up by default saying the solution is inactive. So I can look through my available solutions organized here by the aquifer type. Say for confined aquifers there are a number of possible solutions. Unconfined aquifers have a different number of, of solutions. You can also narrow uh, the so possible solutions displayed here on the right using the solution expert. For instance, I can specify only straight line methods. And here I can easily find my Cooper Jacob straight line solution. Right. So then I'll say OK. And now notice that a line is added to my plot and parameters for the transmissivity and storativity associated with that line are displayed. Now when I can do a visual curve fitting, which is sort of a manual curve fitting,